Hello, welcome to the Biochem Eusteria discussion on amino acid classification. With 20 amino acids in all, it can easily become confusing on how such are classified. They can be classified in various ways. Structurally, their properties or their essentiality or non-essentiality. Because of such complexity, many students resort to confusing mnemonics that are easily forgettable. At the end of this lecture, you will classify amino acids in a, in a new, easier way by tabulating them and just remembering 7 and 4 amino acids instead of the original 20. In order to make it easier for you to remember how they are classified, structurally and based on their polarity, their property is a function of their structure. So basic and acidic from the Bronsted definition, these are the amino acids that can ionize. What does that mean? They become ions, right? They, they donated hydrogen ion. They are acidic. So they become negatively charged. They are anionic because they donated the hydrogen ion that is a proton. However, if the amino acid will accept a hydrogen ion or a proton, what happens? They become cationic and they are basic. What you can see here, the acidic and the basic amino acids are the 7. So the neutral amino acids actually are the 13. We don't really have to remember. What you have to remember are the 7. So acidic, you have aspartic acid. It's the strongest, the most acidic amino acid. Then glutamic acid. Then you have your two weakly acidic amino acids, your cysteine and your tyrosine. It is prudent to please remember the functional group. That will help you remember. Sulfidryl, it has sulfur. It is very... Highly electronegative, okay, so that is acidic, right? And what is basic? So basic, I'll give you a mnemonic. So you have histidine, which is weakly. What is the functional group of histidine? Your imidazole group. You have arginine, that is the strongest amino acid, that is your guanidinium group, and your lysine. This is your HAL, your basic hull. So I remember this when I saw the movie <laughs> Shallow Hull forget Jack Black and Gwyneth Paltrow, just remember basic hull. So they are your basic amino acids. So just remember, these seven, these are your basic and acidic amino acids. So the rest are neutral. But the point of contention here is, if it is neutral amino acid, it does not mean that they are nonpolar. No, because neutral amino acids can be polar. There are groups can contain highly electronegative atoms like nitrogen and oxygen attached to a hydrogen ion that can participate in hydrogen bonding. So if you remember our discussion, what are the neutral amino acids that can participate in hydrogen bonding or that cannot ionize but are polar? If you remember, you have two amino acids that contain your hydroxyl group and these are your serine, right? Serine, it contains your hydroxyl group and your threonine. So serine and threonine are hydroxyl-containing amino acids. They are polar neutral. It means that they don't ionize, but they can participate in hydrogen bonding. Thus, they are polar. Then what else? What do you remember? What do you get if you amidate aspartic and glutamic acid? The, the additional carboxylate group is amidated. So aspartic becoming asparagine and glutamic becoming glutamine. Your amides, these are polar functional groups. Remember, amides are polar functional groups. So just remember, these four, two hydroxylated and two amides are polar neutral amino acids. Then the rest, so these are seven plus four, that's 11. So the nine, don't remember anymore. But from here, you can see that these are your aliphatic amino acids, right? Your aliphatic amino acids, including protein, your phenylalanine and tryptophan, they contain benzene rings without any polar substituents, and proline is an amino acid. For me, just remember the seven, and remember the two hydroxyl-containing amino acids, and the two amide-containing amino acids, and they are the polar neutral amino acids. So essential amino acids, are required in the body because we lack the enzymes to, to synthesize them. They're complicated. For example, branched chain amino acids are very hard to synthesize. Non-essentials, they need not be supplied in the diet because they can be synthesized. We are armed with all the enzymes to, to synthesize them. So the mnemonic really for your amino acids, the private team hall. So these are phenylalanine, valine, isoleucine, methionine, histidine, arginine, leucine, lysine. But the problem with mnemonics is 
you know the mnemonic, you know the letters, but you don't know word which they stand for. For the L and L, we don't have any problems because you have only two amino acids that start with the letter L, right? What about T? This is the problem. You have three amino acids that start with the letter T. You have threonine, tyrosine, tryptophan, right? The thing to remember here is that threonine is a branch chain amino acid. Tryptophan, with the indole, right? It, it's structurally complex, so it has to be taken in. Or if you want, tyrosine is just a hydroxylated phenylalanine, right? If you remember the structure. So my advice is, you look into the structure, you try to remember. You don't have, really have to memorize the structure and draw it by hand. But just look at the special features. Tryptophan is an indole. This is really very complicated. Threonine is branch, okay? So one of the four branch chain amino acids. And tyrosine can easily be hydroxylated from phenylalanine. What, what I want to emphasize here is there's this qualifier, caveat, okay? We're going to count this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You have 10, but this is not always. You don't always absolutely have 10 essential amino acids because arginine is conditionally essential. Normal adults, normal, healthy, non-sick adults can synthesize arginine in the urea cycle. However, Infants, growing children, recuperating patients from surgery, arginine becomes essential. Arginine is special. It's the most basic and it's conditionally essential. So these are your essential amino acids. Then don't remember the others. So the, the amino acids that are not mentioned here are the non-essential amino acids. This is the problem. The P, private, you don't put P because you might confuse it for proline. You just use F. Then amino acids that can be synthesized in the body, these are your non-essential. So that's the rest. You don't have really have to remember. You just remember the essential. Again, arginine is here. Why? For normal non-sick adults, arginine is non-essential. You can synthesize that. Cysteine, as I've mentioned, becomes essential if methionine is deficient. We know that methionine is essential, right? However, for starvation, etc., for one reason or another, Methionine is deficient in the diet. Cysteine becomes essential. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, okay? So 10 from glucose. One amino acid is also non-essential because it is synthesized from an essential amino acid, phenylalanine, that is your tyrosine. Thank you for watching this episode for this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be uploaded regularly.